Hi, this is a continuation for Power Listeners Lectures. And in the previous video, we have uh, discussed the switching losses for the inductive and the resistive load. And today we are going just to show you how we use AltiSpice to give us the validation or the differences between driving the uh, resistive load and inductive load and how we got the power uh, losses as well uh, using the software. So in this example, I have two circuits. They are identical using the same switch, the same gate uh, uh, drive here, and the same supply. But we are using resistive load here, and we are using inductive load here, okay, with a freewheeling diode. So we will run this simulation and see the voltage and current for both of them. So I have uh, given the simulation to run for 100 millisecond, and just to show the uh, results just for the last 20 uh, micro, 200 microsecond okay so now this is the uh, result okay and i just want to show the voltage across for the resistive load the voltage across this transistor now which is just double click on the voltage this is the voltage okay and this is the gate for the first one and also i want to see the current so this is just for the case of the a resistive load and just to scale the uh, the waveforms and to see the the turn on curve so this is the turn on where we have the i think the the voltage of the gate here it is the parallel one here okay and i think we can just zoom like this to take the turn on waveform and keep zooming okay Okay, like this. Okay, so we got the turn on time at this time. We uh, turn on pulse at this time, and the transistor delayed a little bit until it start uh, responding, and that's called the time delay. Okay, so we don't have uh, the action happens exactly at this time. No, it's there is some delay. Okay, and as we see here, we have the uh, voltage which is in green. Okay, and the current, and they are intersecting exactly at the middle i can rescale this one to make it 11 here okay okay and they will be like each other and this one is minus one you can just manipulate the scaling here okay so we have there the voltage and here is the current and they are intersecting exactly at the middle okay so they are um, equally responding okay the voltage moving and also the current moving at the same time no one of them is delayed behind the other and if we want to look at the power dissipation during this uh, period we go to the MOSFET and we press ALT and then just uh, 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 click on this but look at the what's happening or what's shown it's shown here like there is some curve here and goes to some conduction because it's turned on so this is the conduction period here okay but there is something that i want to uh, uh, bring your attention to when i clicked alt and clicked on the when i pressed alt and clicked on the mosfet it gives me the power dissipation by this mosfet uh, from the drain to source and from also the gate side i don't want to consider the gate side how i delete that one i got the equation for the mosfet power dissipation click on this one and delete the gate side which is this one okay the v gate times i gate i don't want it and then press okay so this one exactly is the switch switching uh, power losses during the on time okay and i believe you have seen this in my slides and it has this shape okay and it has a, a peak here okay and the peak here if you calculated the peak it will be about a 25 that 25 watt, it, uh, it, it's obtained by the quarter of V maximum, I maximum. I maximum is, is 10 amp and V maximum is 10 volt. 10 by 10 is 100, quarter of that is a 25 and there yeah, we are getting 25. So let's now go to the uh, um, turn off. So this is period for turn off. Okay, and it will keep the same thing. Okay. Again, this is the turn off signal at the gate, but we have delay until it starts responding. That delay is the TS, saturation or storage time, okay? I will just zoom, okay? So we have the current 
okay uh, uh, this is the current from 10 ampere going to 0 ampere while the voltage from 0 volt to the 10 volt okay I will scale the voltage again to be equal like the current so we have again intersection at the middle the the current and the voltage are acting at the same time okay but if you are using anti-spice to calculate the power dissipation during the on time and off time it's a bit of challenging because uh, if you press control and and press the power dissipation here you will get 5.6 watt 5.6 watt is calculated based on this period which is from this time to that time it's not uh, for the actual period of switching which is about 10 kilohertz okay so uh, that one will not be accurate calculation and you have to consider other way to calculate that one so ignore this uh, calculation if you are using at this price and just look at the curve here and how much the peak there and you can really match what we covered in the lecture now let's go to the inductive case I will measure the voltage here double click okay and here's the voltage and also measure the current and also the pulse at the gate okay and let's now to scale and turn on selection this is the turn on here time and let's zoom in more and more to see what is the waveform and again we have a delay here okay so this is the turn on time uh, but there's a delay TD until it starts responding and I am focusing on this period here okay and more zooming to this period okay and also rescaling for the voltage to be from 12 here and minus 1 to be similar to the current okay 12 ampere to uh, minus 1 ampere and yes we got it now so the, the, the current now in the transistor started growing 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 okay and nearly reached the maximum but the voltage is still not decaying that much it's still at the maximum voltage and that's why we have a little bit delayed voltage that delayed voltage is waiting for the transit for the diode to turn off this diode okay so that's why this point still waiting for the diode to turn off to reach the uh, to decay and reach the zero point so that's why the there is some here uh, uh, maybe differences between the resistive case and inductive case and if I multi if I want to calculate the power dissipation again alt and press on this one I will get here the equation for the uh, power dissipation but I will remove the gate part because it's very important to neglect this now okay and yes we have the, the, the waveform for the uh, power dissipation and the peak for the power dissipation is 100 watt that means yes it considers the voltage maximum times the current maximum 10 ampere times uh, 10 volt which is 100 watt and this is the peak for that all right so this validates exactly what we have covered in the lecture let's now go to the off time and check that so the off time let's select this period and zoom again again we have some delay which is the storage time and again okay so I have to scale again the voltage 12 minus 1 and yes we have the voltage which is the green curve here okay a, a waveform and this is the light green so the, the current still not decaying that much but the voltage has already spiked and and has has already raised to the maximum voltage okay before the current so the current now and the voltage they are at maximum okay and the power dissipation at that point will be very high which is about 100 watt again uh, 10 volt times 10 amp it will be 100 and that's four times more than the resistive case okay that that's what we covered so far so what we have done in the lecture is to calculate the area under this curve to estimate the switching losses but that equation is estimation okay using LT spice to calculate the switching losses it's a bit challenging you have to uh, you have to uh, because it calculates the switching on and off and also the conduction losses okay so if you just press control and use this uh, where, uh, equation for power dissipation calculation you will not get an accurate number because this number is based on the integration from that time to that time 
not the full period of switching okay so try to avoid this and not to rely on it so this validates for us the uh, waveform for the inductor and for the resistive load and if i just want to see the last point which is i want to look at the uh, power dissipation for this one okay and remove this one we will find now we will find now spikes the peak for the uh, power uh, for the induct for the inductive load for the capacity for the resistive load 25 for the resistive and 100 for the uh, for the inductive and that's validate what we got in the lecture and one last point I want to uh, bring your attention to before we finish this lecture is this is a practical waveform for switching on uh, a transistor so for the inductive load so we have the current is already uh, leading okay and uh, is faster than the voltage to reach the maximum but look at that spike here there is a spike happened before reaching that maximum and that spike is called now is caused by the reverse recovery reverse recovery of what of that diode that diode to switch on and off it has some reverse recovery to switch off itself and that causing this spike okay in that in that transistor uh, before it switch off that spike can be minimized and can be maybe be zero okay if you uh, select your diode carefully we will cover the reverse recovery uh, feature or characteristic in the diode lectures but just this is just a point uh, to bring your attention to practically because that happened and you you might not understand why it's happening but it's because of that diode okay so this is extra thing happened because of that diode i think i i i, I finished now this lecture I have shown you how we calculate the switching losses and then how we use AltSpice to validate the, uh, the waveforms that we got on from the lecture and also uh, the, uh, the peaks for the instantaneous power. Thank you very much and see you in the coming videos.